Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlaw, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to connect with David Laverty in Chicago, Illinois, and Wilson Chu in Dallas, Texas. And they're several hundred miles apart, but we're coming together today. We're all, we're all friends. Both David and Wilson are very experienced and knowledgeable international attorneys. David is the principal of, inter of the International Council Law Firm. He focuses on helping clients deal with cross-border legal issues. And during the pandemic, has been active with international distribution of medical equipment for healthcare providers. Wilson is a partner in McDermott, Will, and Emory. He is an innovative and thoughtful attorney who focuses on strategic business transactions and has a dedicated interest in social issues and his community, including being the co-founder of Alliance for Asian American Justice. I've asked David and Wilson to share their individual perspectives from Chicago and Dallas about life and law today. Welcome, gentlemen. David. Thanks, Mark. Good to be here. Thank Glad you, to be here. Good to see you. Uh, how are you doing? How how are your things in 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 uh, Dallas, Wilson? How's it going? Uh, well, let me look. I think it's somewhere around 103 degrees. So I think everything's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> David, we have a much milder temperature today. Well, oh no, you know what? It's in the high 80s. Um, so <laughs> not too different. Uh, we just had a very successful Lollapalooza in Chicago, and. Uh, you know, we always welcome um, thousands upon thousands of people, and it seemed to have gone off without a hitch. And they renewed the relationship for another ten years. <laughs> we're told. So, wow, that's some great. people don't like that. They don't like the traffic. They complain, but it's great for our cities to have these big events. Well, it's good to have you both. And um, I know that from my experience with, with you, uh, both of you are lawyers with lots of contacts and experience in the Asia Pacific region. And I would first like to get your views on current events in that part of the world. What do you see as the major issues facing the Asia Pacific right now? We'll, we'll start with David and then Wilson. Okay. Uh, Mark, among the other questions, it, it, it's, a, it's a challenging question. Um, but let me try uh, from a perspective of, um, where we've been during this pandemic and how we have had less of that personal connection to the region. Um, uh, look, the growth in, in the Asia Pacific has been quite good. Uh, we might expect uh, doom and gloom in terms of the numbers, but, uh, but the region actually is doing quite well. And a lot of uh, legal activity has been up. Wilson, you're probably seeing a good, good chunk of M&A work. And, um, and things look uh, look quite active. Um, some of my concerns, though, are related to the U.S. in our relationship with the region, and I think that um, we're seeing the effects now, but we'll continue to see the, the effects of uh, an inability to directly engage the way we had been. You know, among among people like ourselves as friends, getting together every year, every couple of years. Uh, uh, business negotiations, uh, conferences of various kinds, um, and it all adds up. And I'm, I'm concerned in part for the younger generation that didn't really have the experience that we have had. And they're coming into the profession and various roles uh, a little bit more remotely. They're connecting through Zoom. They're experiencing the region in a little, little bit more of a remote sense. Um, I, I would like to see the United States better and more vigorously engaged. Uh, China has been uh, at, at an advantage and as um, I know we're gonna be talking about China more, but uh, it is really uh, engaged in a way that the, the US and in uh, our citizens up and down the food chain have been less so. And I'm a little concerned about our policies and whether uh, we are engaged as we should be. And um, 
Uh, I think there are some promising signs with trade agreements, et cetera, but I think we do need to do more to stay in the game in that region. So more people like, uh, like us can have that, these great experiences if they go down their careers. So that, that sounds, you're, you're talking both politics and personal uh, and professional uh, indications. And all of that has an effect on our relationship from the, of the United States to it. Asia Pacific. Wilson, what are, what are your thoughts? On um, the <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, want, I want to do the standard disclaimer. These are just my personal uninformed views. Okay, it doesn't represent anything of McDermott or anyone who may know my name. So it's just me. I'm the only one to blame about this. <clears throat> so <clears throat> for me, Asia Pacific, it, it's, it's what David talked about. It's just one word. It's China. And, and how they're relating to the West, how they're relating to the other, other countries, it, you know, what, what's going on uh, in Hong Kong, you know, how does it benefit or doesn't benefit the other countries in Asia, you know? So it's, it all boils down to what China is, is currently doing and, you know, what their, what their goals are in the future. And uh, I, I totally agree with David that we, we do need to engage, uh, you know, better. I think we are, uh, we're, the United States is a, is a good influence in Asia and we should be there more and, and, you know, more vigorously. Well, you know, let's follow up a little bit on, on China. Um, uh, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about China? I mean, um, I have lots of friends there, uh, a lot of attorney friends in China. Um, what's what's going on in China right now? Uh, what, why are what, what's this about? We'll, we'll, we'll start with you, Wilson. Well, what's it? I mean, I, I think there's still you know there there's a uh, there's some economic unrest, right? You have that Evergrande. Uh, the, the big debacle, Evergrande, and they said that could be even bigger than the Lehman Brothers. So it's it's, it's a real estate bust. You've heard, I've heard of protests, uh, you know, around you know uh, parts of, of China where people are saying, "I don't want to pay my mortgage, right, because it's illegally foisted on me or whatever it is." And it's causing all these protests, and it's just gaining more and more steam. And and you know, we don't get to see them, but. Now they're really able to organize, you know, on their phones. And so I, I, I think so. There are domestic problems in China. And then, you know, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of raised awareness and concern about how China conducts businesses, call it. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that, that causes external issues. This thing about Pelosi wanting to make a stop in Taiwan. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> the life of me, I don't know why you want to do that right now. But, you know, she did, uh, you know, that causes a problem. I know we'll talk about that later, but, but you know, uh, you know, it, is it, if you have internal problems, do you try to solve it with an external action, right? And so, so maybe, never... this a, maybe, maybe this is a strategy uh, of the Chinese government to solve internal issues <laughs> with external actions. Uh, is what you're saying, or, or, or distract, or distract, uh, you know. David, so. what are your thoughts? Yeah, interesting comments, Wilson, and uh, yeah, I'm um, thinking 20 years ago, you know, when going back to some of our shared experience with the Inter Pacific Bar Association, and, um, and when China was just becoming a player in that economy, uh, it wasn't that long ago. I was based in Korea in the late 80s. There was no China as, as a player in the economy. It, it, you had Japan, of course, Hong Kong, Singapore, Korea, the place we call Taiwan. And we can call it Taiwan here, I think. Uh, and China was just on the verge of taking off. Um, and then those early days with the WTO and and all about engagement, all about how we can work with China and how China can work with the rest of the Asia Pacific, the rest of the world, including the United States. 
Um, and I think there was a lot of progress made. You know, a lot of those restrictions um, were very severe. Back in, from a late 80s perspective and early 90s, you, know, you were barely able as a foreign company to do anything in China, say if you wanted an equity interest in a, in a, uh, a Chinese company, it was a, certainly a minority interest. Uh, you were, would be, I was involved in a deal in about 1992. Here is your partner. You don't really have a choice over who you're going to be working with. This was in a retail venture. So things had changed so dramatically and so much liberalization of the Chinese economy. Um, I think some of that remains, a lot of it remains. So I, we tend to, I look, look at from a business, in my own view, from a on the ground, business to business perspective, the glass is still essentially half full. We haven't in any way reverted to those restrictions of the old days. Uh, yes, there are problems. Yes, the IP issues have never gone away. Um, the challenges of people, you know, companies doing business in China are very real. But, but here and looking at a Chicago business environment perspective, it's pretty doom and gloom in terms of how tough it is to do business in China and um, how much the Chinese are cheating and the game is stacked against uh, foreign companies, et cetera. I mean, some of that is certainly, uh, you know, not, not ill-informed, but I think it's gone a little far in the opposite direction. You know, and I, I find it really interesting you probably have some was views on was that. about, uh, you know, the, the external strategy for internal problems. That's a really interesting thought, really interesting insight. Um, I want to ask you each one quick question about Pelosi. And then I want to I want to go into what's happening in uh, Chicago, well, in Illinois and Texas. But first of all, do you, do you, there is this threat out there that if Pelosi goes to Taiwan, China will shoot down her the plane. Is, is, do either of you, I mean, is that just for news? Wilson, what do you think? I think it's a self-inflicted bad situation. Uh, and it just it just didn't need to happen. Uh, you know, if, if it was coordinated with the White House, you want to send a message to the uh, to the uh, uh, you know to the region that you know the U.S. is is you know resolute and all that kind of stuff. Great, but this this seems so so Keystone Copish, and it's like a self inflicted. Why are you doing this? So you know, and, and it backs China into a corner, and they, they need to puff up. All right, and and then the U.S. needs to puff up, and that that just never never gets, you know, never right. has a good resolution. You didn't so need to. There, there could have been a better way to handle it. Uh, yes. David, yeah, David, what are you, what are your thoughts? No shooting down of planes. Um, there's, there's way too much at stake, and I'm not seeing that they're insane people with the Chinese leadership. I'm not going to start a world war over Pelosi's visit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the relationship still is incredibly important to both countries. Well, no yeah. one's stupid enough to destroy that right now. I don't think. I mean, of course, things can go out of control. One step can lead to another, can lead, lead to an unexpected response. And, you know, we, yeah, we you find see. not predicted, but some things can happen. I just doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, kind of goes I up. hope not. <laughs> well, yeah. But it kind of goes along with what you were saying, Wilson, about the strategy. Uh, anyway, right, right now, I want to I want to go back and I want to uh, focus on your personal and professional lives in your respective cities and states. And you know, they're, they're, the, the, these mass shootings that have come up, Texas and Illinois have both experienced mass shootings. Uvalde, Texas, Highland Park, Illinois. What has been the reaction of the people and the lawyers in your cities and states to these mass shootings? Uh, Wilson, let's start with you. It's disheartening, right? I mean, just, <clears throat> it's, it's, you can't, I can't understand people like this, but there are crazy people. There are crazy people. And from my view, and I'll, I'll give you, you'll, you'll probably say, of course, he's from Texas. But my view is, is you know, it's people, not guns. All right, and then so so what if he didn't have AK forty seven? If he had a knife, okay, 
or, or he had a car that mowed down everybody in the, in the parking lot, right? Would you ban cars, right? It, it's, it's the person, not, not the thing that they use. And I'm, I'm sure other people have different views about it, but you gotta do it. These are, there are some crazy people out there we had to figure out. You know, I'm all, you wanna do background checks? Effective ones, good. Apparently this guy should not have been able to pass it, but he did, and a lot of other people. Uh, but, you know, I think we, it's, it's really a mental health, a big mental health problem. And like I said, remember in, in Wisconsin where it was during a Christmas parade when some guy, you know, drove his car into a Christmas parade and mowed people down? Okay. They weren't blaming cars. They weren't blaming him either. Right? David. Uh yeah, that's that's you. that's that's it. I appreciate your, your perspective, Wilson. Um we have had such a gun problem in Chicago for 50 years plus. And what I think people from outside of Chicago don't appreciate is that there isn't a single Chicago, it's two separate cities at least. There's the south side and west side sort of combined. And then where we lawyers and professionals and the private equity people, et cetera, live, it's on the north side. And then the northern suburbs outside of Chicago. The south side has had a tremendous gun issue. You know, and I'd like to say it's a people issue, but it's the gun availability to solve all kinds of disputes, which are often gang issues, um, sometimes just out and out robberies, et cetera. And it's often within these communities against each other. Um, what's been happening is that those issues have been seeping into the North side. And so <laughs> the lawyers have started to pay a little bit more attention. It used to be that was the problem down there. And yeah, it's an issue, but <clears> as long as we're not facing it in the central business district, um, in the place where a lot of people, uh, the professionals, et cetera, are living, there was an unbelievable degree of, of toleration for it. And it's not guns themselves. The education system is, is absolutely a uh, horrendous condition. Healthcare is, is horrendous. I mean, looking at the pandemic, the impact in those communities versus these north side communities is vastly different. So I, I think the, the big difference is, oh my God, it's happening on the north side, including <clears throat> now this incident in what's a very placid northern suburb that um, uh, many people have felt, even if the issues are creeping into the north side of Chicago, we're okay here, we're safe, we're we're prudent people, we live in a safe community and those issues don't affect us. Um, I mean, people are horrified. And um, I think there's a little bit of a step in the direction though of people realizing it's all of our issue. It's not a South side, yes. North side suburb issue. It's all of our issue. And, and I'm hopeful that, um, that it will lead some amount of good, even though Chicago has had very strong uh, gun laws comparatively to other parts of the country. It, 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 these, these weapons come in from other states and other communities. And... You know, you know, you know what's, yeah. what's good about our talk here is that we hear from people, you too, that are in each community. Oftentimes the news uh, is, well, it's, it's above the local folks. And hearing from each of you is, is really good. It's really important. And it's very helpful to understand each community. Now, um, is there anything being done in Wilson first, you know, with respect to the Texas community in reaction? Is there any, has there been anything done <clears throat> to the mass shootings? So can, I, can I start with uh, just yeah. a little bit about what David said about <clears throat> people are finally figuring out that we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, back in the old days, if they can, you know, the, the South side, they can just shoot themselves up as long as we're fine. I, I was listening to that. I go, well, that, that's wrong. Right. And, and it, it's, it's cultural, all this crazy stuff and the, and the gun laws. <clears throat> One thing about the school shootings. Okay. Think about this. 
this this thing called a gun-free zone. All right, you see these signs all over school says gun-free zone. So if you're a crazy and you want to do harm with a gun or whatever, whatever it is, right? Isn't that just a sign that says, come on, we're defenseless. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's, it's like a really dumb thing. We all want the same thing, school, safe schools for our kids. But the solutions and the priorities on those solutions, you know, there's, I'm just shocked at, at how bad those solutions are. I'll give you an example, like what do they do in San Francisco? We have a homeless problem. So what do we do? Oh, we're going to build housing for the homeless. Well, how much does that cost? Oh, about $800,000 a unit. Okay. And you want to house people who, by the way, don't want to be in a house because they have rules that they need to follow. They have to be responsible. They don't want it. So, you know, a lot of times I, I think, you know, my friends are a little bit left of me. You know, we'll have the same concerns and wants, but the solutions are, are vast, priorities are vastly different. So I guess, is there a solution? And uh, David, David, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I am a little left of, uh, of Wilson, <laughs> um, which, I mean, we all are in Chicago. You know, in, in Chicago is a very liberal, democratic, city and the state a little bit less so but we will invariably have democrat mayors in chicago mayor lightfoot Lori lightfoot who's a michigan undergrad I, I have to point out even though she went to university of chicago law school um governor pritzker democrat um uh, oh, the, the the solutions so far are pathetic and they're, they're, you know, trying and Mayor Lightfoot and, and the governor, but the mayor is, is um, trying to step up policing in some of the central business areas, Michigan Avenue, where there's a lot of shopping area, you know, desperately trying to stop incidents that are high profile public incidents. Lollapalooza was heavily, heavily policed. The city wasn't going to dare let anything happen. You know, of course, it's out of everybody's control ultimately. But, but so there has been a, a more aggressive policing. Um, there has been, uh, there was a ghost gun ban that went into effect. So the governor signed a, you know, a untraceable gun ban. I, I doubt it will do much good. It, there's just, there's so many guns in the system right now, we could stop everything for the next, 15 years and there'd be enough of a supply floating around to get into the wrong hands. Um, so I, I go back to the basic um, structure of these different parts of, of our country. When people don't have economic opportunities, they don't have <clears throat> access to education, they don't have access to health care, there are issues that come up. And that's a little bit of a different thing. That's more of an urban violence <clears throat> issue. I recognize there are also lunatics every place in the country that will come out of the woodwork now and then. So it's it's a slightly different solution if you're in an urban core versus uh, trying to stop the crazos from shooting schools or or any any kind of effect. David, I, I yeah. think you're absolutely. It, it's it's an opportunity issue. I'm mm -hmm. a big believer in equal, equal opportunity, not equal equality of outcome. And, uh, you know, if you look at the, the public school system, somebody, somebody called, it, called it a government school and it, it, it gave me a completely different impression, hmm. right? That it's a government school. But if you look at these kids, especially in the inner city, like you say, South Carolina, Chicago, you know, you know, people who can read at grade level, few and far between, right? I mean, how does that happen? Because we put in so much money into the school systems. How does that happen? And, and I think it, it really starts with the family unit, okay? If you have a, a strong family unit foundation, all right, you have something to go. So, so what's the statistic like in the 60s, 
African American family, 70% had, you know, dad in the home. Now it's completely flipped. Only 30%. And, and it's, where's your role model to, to be able to act, you know, like someone who wants to be a good part of the community? I'm so, going to have to mention, though, one initiative that actually driven by lawyers initially and built by a lot of lawyers. <laughs> many other people in the community called Chicago Scholars. So go to these neighborhoods and find the kids who are motivated and have the potential and then uh, mentor them and stay on them, get them into college and not just that to get them through college and not just that to plug them into the networks that could then help with their foundations and not just that, the ambition is then to put them into the leadership of the city, government, corporations, law firms. And it's now going on for 25 years. And there are thousands of kids who have come out of those schools mm -hmm. for whatever reason they survived it. And they're contributing already in very tangible ways to the city. Now that's not gonna solve the whole problem, but it's, it's a piece. It's a start. It, 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 it's a start. It, it, it's good to hear the, from about that. It's also good that I know that Wilson's done things similar. And, you know, there, there may be divisiveness in the United States. And you, you folks, both of you have said did different viewpoints, but we're talking, yep. which is good. Yep. And I think now <laughs> we, we, we have about a minute left, <laughs> a couple minutes left. How's that? There, there's a lot of things. You know, bad things going on in the world in the United States. And I, I'd like to have you each just take a minute. What gives you hope? What gives you personally hope for the future? And, and uh, we'll start with Wilson and then David. W Wilson, what gives me hope? Do, you, do you have hope? <laughs> Absolutely, I have hope. I'm, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And I, I see hope in people, hope in, you know, the people who want to, you know, try to do better, help others, you know, help, you know, if life is a buffet bar, you know, they're going to help others rather than help themselves. They're so, they're so full of people. I just, and, and positive people. So I have a lot of hope. We, we have, we have a lot of what I call fighting over first world problems right now. And, you know, it, it we shouldn't be, if you've been to other countries where they didn't have everything that we have, you know, we'd be talking about other things, right? So, you know, let's let's all get together and stop needling each other over, you said this, or you didn't say my right pronoun or whatnot. Why? I have David. hope. David. Yeah, well, it's also a half full kind of guy. Um, but I think um, I'm, I see hope in uh, the, some of these kids that I'm seeing from the South side who are rising up through whatever challenge that they've had and absolutely becoming uh, superpowers. Uh, and, and part of it is they, they have a grit. They've come through a lot, get them the right opportunities and they are not sitting around complaining about this, that, and the other. They are taking things very seriously and aggressively and I, and um, I'm impressed with them. I've got a son now who's a rising sophomore in college and I am very hopeful seeing Alex's friends, um, both from high school and his college friends. They're thoughtful, uh, they care about the world. Um, I don't know how representative they are, but it definitely gives me hope to see that group. They're not just sitting around behind a computer screen. Well, you, might think. You, know, you know what gives me hope is YouTube. Okay. And both of you, and just talking about this and, and hearing about Dallas and Chicago viewpoints, uh, actually, it's very hopeful that you are both willing to talk and get it out there and share your views. So I want to thank you very much. And, and maybe you're, you know, the glass half full is getting full right now through this, through our talking. I appreciate it. So thank you, gentlemen. It's good to see you again. I, I look forward to it when we can meet in person sometime. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for being together with me today.
Mark, thanks for inviting me. And I hope that we get together soon so we can fill up the glass with more Mai Tai mix. Okay. All right. I am yeah. in. <laughs>